The next is Howard Schneider. Hi, Howard. The floor is yours. Oh, you, we cannot hear you, sorry. No, no sound, absolutely no, no sound. No. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, is the volume okay? It sound is good? Could be a, a bit higher. A bit higher? Okay, I'll, I'll speak louder. Let me just see. Okay, no mind. problem. I, I will speak louder. Is this okay if I speak louder? Can you hear oh, me? Yeah, clearly? that's that's fine. Yes. Fine. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Good morning to all. Uh, let me start the presentation. Um, start it here. Um, okay. Um, oh, we still do not see your screen. Oh, you can't see my screen. No. Okay. So. Um, how do I share the screen? Um, there is a green button. Share screen? There must share be screen. A, a large um, green button in Zoom controls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got it here. Oh, so I've got it. Will I be able to switch between Python screens and I'll, I'll try my you best. You can okay. share the entire screen. I can share the entire. Okay, share. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks. Great. Okay, so let's go here. Okay. Um, I, I'm Howard Schneider from Toronto, Canada, and I will be talking today about the Causal Cognitive Architecture 2, CCA2, a solution to the binding problem. I spoke last year about the CCA1 and the year before about the CCA0 effectively. Um, before I start going to details, and a lot of the details are, are in the paper, why another cognitive architecture? Why should I even work on this? It's because there's a lot of details um, I was interested in that I didn't think the other architectures had dealt with. Uh, for one, for example, um, why such a high prevalence of psychosis in humans? 1% um, of the population has schizophrenia, which is a large number to start with, but actually 17%, and that's Vanos et al. 2001, will have some psychosis or psychosis-like reaction during their lifetime, which is a very, very high number. And, and these are bad things. Hallucinations, delusions do not help anyone. Um, and animals, in, contra in contrast, um, animals get depressed, animals get anxiety. They do not get psychosis very, very rarely. Also, at the same time, animals do not have full causal behavior. And we discussed this actually a year ago, two years ago, um, at one of my presentations. Um, despite, um, there's examples of animals doing tricks, but they barely have pre-causal behavior. They don't have full causal behavior. For example, chimpanzees, chimpanzee here, um, there's a, um, um, uh, you give the chimpanzee a stick, um, see if it can pull the food in, if it can pull the food into the um, edge. Um, it can do that, but if you put a gravity trap here where the food will fall down um, in, into, the, um, in, into the gravity trap, uh, it takes the chimpanzee 100 tries to do it. It's, it's learning by association. It doesn't have full causal behavior. Um, okay, so in terms of making a cognitive architecture, what do I use? Symbolic logic, um, which is great. It's too bad people aren't doing more work in it. Um, neural networks, 99% of people in AI think that's taken over the field. Um, there's other ways of getting intelligence too. An area I'm very interested in is um, navigation maps um, um, for different reasons. One, um, for same evolutionary reasons, you go back uh, 500 million years to the Precambrian. Um, invertebrates use have navigation. Um, just about all animals use navigation to some extent. Um, invertebrates, they all have formal navigation systems, very simple, similar to the mammalian hippocampus going all the way back to lampreys. And the work done um, on navigation systems, you know, the hippocampus in the mammal has just been incredible the last few decades. Uh, Nobel Prize was given in 2015. Um, a, a lot of the work, um, actually, Dr. Samsonovich's paper, uh, which influenced me a lot, 2005, and I believe Dr. Ascali is also speaking, um, I think, a half hour after me. Um, the fact is that the um, same system used for navigation also seems to be responsible for navigation memories. Um, you know, so I said, okay, if I'm building a, a causal, an architecture, let me just use navigation. And navigation for a navigation module 
not just for navigation of the agent, but for everything. Use navigation module for everything. And I presented it last year, and um, it seemed to work well for toy problems, for simple problems. Um, you could sense sensory stimuli with both through here. You could have some sort of action, some sort of output, and cycles would go around. So this year, I got excited. I said, I'm going to work really hard on these learned primitives, instinctive primitives, which, as I explained last year, these are the rules, sort of productions or rules, which you apply on the navigation module and would get it to make decisions, the rules. But what happened is, I, um, I'm also, sorry, just quick, the, the slide from last year, as I showed, um, the nice thing about this architecture is if, um, um, if you feed partial results back from the navigation module to the sensory modules and process the, the partial result in the next cycle, uh, what happens is you can get causal behavior. And although at the same time you get psychotic psychosis, the risk of psychosis dramatically increases. Um, so I, I had an explanation for the things I was interested in, and it seems to solve some of the problems. Um, um, for example, schizophrenia paradox. If schizophrenia is such a bad illness, why doesn't evolution take it out? It's because it's not an illness. It's a design issue. Um, we designed the system to have this behavior to get causal ability. And as a result, you get psychosis. So um, it, it, evolution will improve it, but very, very slowly, not like a normal disease. And in fact, um, there's genetic results from Denisovian DNA from Denisovians like Neanderthal. We have the DNA, we know their genetic makeup and the thousands of genes which are associated with schizophrenia seem to have decreased over the last um, 200,000 years. But anyway, going back to this one, I, um, I, I, I hit problems in, turn, in trying to make the system more robust. What happened is I, I have a binding problem when I vision comes in, auditory comes in, different senses come in, and I have to bind them. I bind them in this module, and then I send a signal to the navigation module, the other modules. The problem is for simple problems, it works fine as I showed last year, but as the problems get more complex, it's very, very hard. I needed some sort of um, essentially a binding language of sorts. I had There's different combination of inputs, how to handle it. So what I did this year is I got rid of the binding module and I started dealing with the binding uh, problem, which to me was always a problem in philosophy. I didn't really think it was such a big issue. Um, the, the binding problem is, um, 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 Feldman gives a good example. Basically, if we're having different streams of inputs into our brain, vision, auditory, other senses, tactile, how do we put them together? I see a cube that's red um, and round and uh, I mean, sorry, red with straight edges and it's associated with the noise. How do I bind it in the brain? That was a big question people asked, many people. Also this, um, which is more philosophical, this subjective unity of perception, it's, you know, feeling that you can perceive everything. How do we bind the visual features? And so I started dealing with that this year and um, with a very simple purpose. How do I make a robust, more agent, an agent that can handle problems that are um, not toy problems, more complex problems? And I created this. I have an object segmenting gateway module where I segment the object, basically very simple visual very simple visual and other sensory recognition, um, similar to what a convolution does in a CNN. Um, and and then, then it's matched to the causal memory module. So uh, sensory vectors come in, they're segmented, match it to the best memory map that already, that I, I'm storing every memory navigation map, navigation map that is created and then operated on it. Uh, for example, if the agent sees a picture of a river for this, these are maps. These maps are already stored. They're already stored. Um, they're already stored in the um, in, in the causal memory module. It maps. It it tries. It tries to match to the best map possible, and then it gets the map, and then it updates it with whatever the local information is of the actual scene it sinks. So yeah, all the information is in a navigation map. Um, and, and this does wonderful things. You, 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 um, a lot of the problems here are solved, as I will discuss. Let me give first a demonstration of the, of the system. And one last thing is before um, another problem I hit, um, which goes beyond what the, you know, the, the, the textbooks talk about the binding problem is, I also have to bind changes over time, uh, essentially DSDP, the first order derivative. Um, if I don't bind 
time, to, I had to find time as a spatial feature, as a just like a feature of space. Because what happens is I had to take 30 navigation maps per second, just as in a video. And then um, you, you have a huge number of navigation maps filling up memory, but the hardest part is analyzing them. If something's moving through space, I have to then be able to go look through, um, say in 10 seconds, 300 different navigation maps. It was much easier to um, find, create a motion to predict a, a vector for each motion and then find that as a, just like I do a spatial feature. Let me, rather than talk, let me give a demonstration of the actual code. Um, I'll first do a walkthrough through the source code. Um, just one second here, I'm screenshot. I, I don't see my, my face here. Um, Okay, there I am. If talking you stop screen. your presentation and share your other window or the entire. I did, yeah, yeah. I shared the other window. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can see it here. So let me just walk through the. Um, th this is the architecture which we'll be referring to, and um, just the code. Um, um, th this is the. Um, Code. I'll show the actual code in a second. It's just easier in the PowerPoint. I have six Python modules. I have about 10,000 lines of um, source code. Um, it, it's, um, and the way Python works is it, why people use it. There's so many libraries available. Uh, I use PyTorch for the neural network and a few lines of code a neural network is created. Although in the current version, I'm using uh, Fuzzy Wuzzy, which is a fuzzy logic library, which works fine. I, it's Again, I, my main data element is a navigation module, which I believe is the way our brains work. Um, it's, it's a navigation module. Um, I, I, it's not symbolic logic. It's not neural network navigation. Everything's done by navigation. Um, Python-based code starting off, the main loop um, enter hyperparameters. Um, again, it's just blown up here, but I'll show the code in about 30 seconds. Um, the the this looks, uh, I basically, you can choose when you run the program on sort of on a rough evolutionary scale. If you want to run something with a lamprey brain, fish brain, mammal brain, a human brain, um, it, it seems sophisticated, but it's not. Basically, it's just I can turn different modules on and off. In the human brain, I have full causal behavior with full feedback uh, loop like I showed in the architecture. And this is the main signal. This, I have two main data elements, um, um, ext, which is a NumPy array. And P, Num, NumPy. It's it's people use Python. It's 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 a linear algebra um, toolkit that allows you to create these large arrays and manip manipulate them very easily. And the reason I have this one X is I, I I'm doing a simulation, so I need to simulate something. Either I need um, a camera, you know, and speakers, and to put it into a real um, environment, which would be great, and maybe one day. But since I can't do that right now, I have to simulate the environment. So. The environment is simulated in this variable. And this is my variable for the navigation maps is GB, just game board, because it's a six by six. It's a six by six by six grid. Uh, I'm using two dimensions now, but it will operate in three dimensions. And in fact, most of the research on the hippocampus is done in two dimensions, but um, there's people um, doing work actually in three dimensions, for example, with fruit bats. Um, they can show that uh, even though two-dimension surface, you actually have three dimensions represented on it when the bat goes through the air. Um, okay, so I, and also the primitives, the rules, or is it productions, like ACPR system, you call it a production. My primitives are also navigation maps. Everything is a navigation map in my system. And um, okay, so let's go through some of the code here. I'm gonna try this gently if I can okay. escape. I'm gonna just escape from the PowerPoint. Let me... Um, this is the actual code, just normal Python code. I show you something manipulated, straight Python code, nothing fancy, just lots of it. And here, if I run it. Um, oh, uh, I'm sorry, we are, we are still looking at your PowerPoint window. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, okay. So let me let me see. Stop Can you sharing. Share the new entire share. screen new share. or uh, just switch new share. The new share. Yeah, new share. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so okay. share. Can you see my terminal screen now? Uh, yes. Okay, I don't know if it's large enough. I can I can uh, enlarge it. It is yeah. on my screen at least. It's large enough. Okay, so I'm running the program. It's a Python program, and um, it starts off here. L let me just show the code for two seconds. I'm just getting out of the terminal. I'm going to share the um, new share. Just show it for one second. I'll come back. I don't want to 
looking at, I'm, I'm turning my head to look at the clock. I don't want to take too much time. Okay, so share. Okay, are you able to see the code now? Yeah. Okay, it's just play, there's lots of it, you know, do this, do that, nothing special. Um, I think this it's it's the special things in the ideas, not not the software. Um, let me just change something here. One second. This is I'm in module. This is an uh, editor I use called Notepad. It's a screen is split here. Here. Um, um, let me just change something here. Yeah. So where it says one moment, please. Here, let me say. Save it, share the screen to something different now. You share, share to command prompt, share. Okay. Right here. Lint it, make sure I didn't make a mistake. Okay. So here, it's Python code. I just, it's a silly little thing. I just changed a print statement, but that's the code. And let's let's go through an iteration of the code. And um, I, I'll switch back to the architecture if it's, you know, just so that people can see. This is uh, just for entering like develop codes like for development so that I can bypass things that are faster to work with. Um, computing environment becomes a larger issue if I'm running PyTorch. I, I, need, I need GPUs. It will, um, the neural network will not, will not run on this computer. Uh, you need a GPU to run it. Um, software CC3. Okay, run one is the Simulation one, enter hyperparameters. So here I'm choosing here, human brain, five, and um, okay, and I chose here, I just pressed default. Basically it's gonna act as uh, something to help a patient in a hospital room. It's a, the, the, the architecture will control a robot to help a patient in a hospital room. This is cycle one. These are the evaluation cycles that um, Go round and round. Scene one is the simulation scene that's being sent in. Um, okay, this autonomic system for, in the loop at first checks that there's not much happening. I don't. Can you see this screen that it just popped up? I don't know if I have no. to share. Okay, let me share it. No problem. Right, one second. Share. Can you share the entire screen? By the way, um, it's it's on. It's showing it on one screen. Um, I will. I will. Let me just see here. Here it, I'll just come back up here not to go on. This, this image, this is not from the architecture. This is from the simulation. The simulation is saying, this is what you see in front of you. Uh -huh. This is from the simulation. So it's, it's being seen this, it, it, it's a robot. The architecture is controlling a robot in a hospital room. If it was, if it would had cameras and a microphone, it would hear things and see things, but it's being simulated. The simulation is coming into it. This is what it sees. Um, okay, new share. That's the terminal. Okay. I could put multiple windows, but it'll be too small. It, I think it's better um, to just show the whole screen. Okay. Whatever you prefer, but we are close to the time limit, by the way. Okay, I'll be very fast. I'll be fast. So far. This one, I think. Um, in a second, I have to get out of the screen. I'll be finished fast. Um, I guess Ricardo had questions about your code, so maybe he can ask you. Okay, one second. Um, how do I get out of that screen? Yeah. Here. Okay, let me just get code. Okay, and you're able to see my terminal now, right? Yeah. Okay, so it went through it fast. These, it, it's finding the scenes, finding, and I get to the object segmentation module, and it binds it. It binds it in a navigation map. All the sensory things go into a map like this. This is a map. It's a it's a two dimensional map. It's three dimensions, but the tenth the z dimension is not being used. Olfactory binding, um, visual binding, occurring here. Then I have to match the best navigation map, as I showed you in that diagram, where um, I map from the what exists in memory, map it to the best maps that already exist, which are these. Then. Um, it's got to decide to update the map, but there's six there's six differences between what it this, what it saw in the scene and what exists in memory. So as a result, it's going to create a new navigation map. Um, so it creates a new navigation map, which is this. Then the next step is it's going to do operations on the navigation map um, here. 
And then the next step is it's going to look for a rule of primitive, and the primitive is a navigation map too, which it matches. And it says um, basically a primitive if a body's falling, push against it, so pushes against it. And it's here, it's it, it applies it to this part here, which is four, four, it should be four, four, zero. And um, here, this is the output module here. So basically the robot arm moves to four, four, zero, stop the person from falling. Explanation, explanations occur. Um, it emerges from the system, as I explained last year, is because I just read the navigation maps. The navigation maps give explanation and they actually create a language, which I call a proto-language. I had no desire to work on language, but it just comes out because if you read the navigation maps, the language comes out. And um, then it starts in the next cycle. I'm going to share screen now. I'm going to finish the presentation in four minutes. I'm done. Four or five minutes. I'm done. Can you share? Okay. Okay. So back to here and confirm slides. So, so this was the live demonstration of the code. This is the architecture we saw. The binding problem very quickly. Feldman, problem one, sub problem of the binding problem, general coordination of objects and activities, which we did. Doesn't matter that the sensory things may go into different streams. Um, we're able to coordinate objects and we're able to do things with them. We applied the primitives against the navigation map. Um, the pro subjective unity of perception, which to me always seemed like a philosophy problem, but the answer emerges from here. Once you match your, your, your senses to the best navigation map that you have in memory, um, that best navigation map is your perception. And this is why two agents may have different perceptions, just as two different people may have different perceptions, depending on what the memory maps are. Um, visual feature binding, which of course it does, we showed. And binding of words and allowing reasoning. I, I, didn't, I had no intention of working on language, but the language emerges once I'm using navigation maps. I have explainability by reading the maps back. And, and the maps is a very simple function to convert each map to simple with a simple verb and noun for language. And then one other thing I added, the literature doesn't talk about binding the problem with respect to time, but you have to. If I don't do that, the engineering doesn't work. So in the CCA, this talk is about CCA2, but in the CCA3, it binds space and time. And um, <coughs> that, that's a presentation, some desirable properties to it. Um, you have, for example, lifelong learning, continual learning, a neural network. If Once you train it, if you change something, uh, you have to retrain the whole neural network, which is a huge issue. In Baika, in Prague, there were a lot of talks on it. It was a big issue, um, I think, in the general AGI section. Um, lifelong learning occurs here. Continuous learning occurs. Analogies can be handled. Solutions to schizophrenia, paradox. So um, I, I, I think, you know, in terms of conceptions, in terms of ideas, this this um, cognitive architecture, um, I believe suits, suits its purpose. And in terms of becoming a stronger software, hopefully this year, now that there's a better architecture, the primitives can be made stronger and people can say, hey, what can it really do? And I can say, oh, it can do this, it can do that. Right now, it's more um, on a conceptual level on a pilot level. Thank you very much, any questions? Okay, thank you very much, Howard. <coughs> Does anybody have questions? about Ricardo. Yeah, I, I have a question. Sorry, I cannot hear what you say. Can you uh, speak louder? Again, this is a problem with this. Uh, yeah, we can hear you now. OK. Um, well, uh, Howard, uh, yes. what kind of, of uh, neural network that uh, you are using? Uh, it's a multi-layer perceptron, uh, it's a, a, a cohoning network. W what kind of neural network are you simulating with your, your, your system? I'm not, I'm not simulating neural network. I, I, I decided, to, I, I, I leave the neural networks alone to other people. I leave symbolic, I don't do some work on neural networks. I don't do work on symbolic logic. I believe honestly, navigation map. And I believe that's the way our brain works, hippocampus, and, the re and I believe the rest of the brain is just duplication of hippocampus. Um, I, I believe it works by different mechanisms. It's so navigation. You, you, you have different. You I have just a use kind the of a... for, for matching. Hmm. I, I, I don't, you know, which I believe, you know, the thing is neural networks, whether, you know, now people are realizing too, you know, everybody for visual recognition, people were using CNN convolutional neural networks. Then they were, now, you know, people like, for example, Google's been doing work on visual transformers. We're using a transformer. There's different ways of recognizing things. 
Also, in terms of the brain, um, most of, you know, people of Weisel, who, by the way, did the original work in Montreal, where I'm from originally, um, th then they went to Harvard and won the Nobel Prize for showing how the brain works in a cat. Um, you know, you know, it showed multi layers, and then a lot of, and then the uh, neocognitron was created, and then CNNs emerged in the 1980s. Um, however, you know, other animals don't have all these layers. For example, mice, rats, they they have one layer, it goes into one visual cortex, V1, and that's it. I think there's many ways of recognizing things. Um, it's just, you know, neural networks, CNNs are extremely powerful. They they're being used in industry now that can recognize images. Um, um, but but I, I think the way our brains work is different. It's I'm using navigation navigation modules. It's just the neural network is just a tool so I can recognize things. Um, but I don't have to use a neural network. I, I mean a, a convolution neural network. I can use a transformer. I can use this. However, in Python, there's the PyTorch library, and PyTorch you know makes it easy to use CNNs, for example. A, a CNN it's it's more than a multi-layer perceptron. You get convolutional levels. The convolution actually, you know, will, will, will recognize features. Right? Yeah, but I, I, what, what I'm asking is, uh, what is inside those boxes that you show in your, in your diagram? Because you, you show to us a, a box and say, okay, I have an input, I have an output, but what are you doing inside this box? This is uh, basically what I'm trying to, to guess, to, to, to understand. Oh, oh, because... I, 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 um, I, I can show the code here, and also as well in a paper that I'm just finishing um, updates. Um, on the CCA3, this, this presentation was on the CCA2. I sent it in about, I think, six months ago or eight months ago. Um, on the CCA3, I, I'm going to provide, like in a, in a larger paper, um, specification for every single module, basically the input, oh, this, the output, this... and the function, and, and the processing. Um, you know, effectively the same thing as looking through the code. And, and the code, I hope to release it once it gets cleaned up. Um, mm -hmm. The problem is the code without a walkthrough. I don't know how useful it is. I, I sometimes look at code in GitHub, it's, it's hard because, um, you know, it, it, I, I think it has to be massaged into shape so that you can, it shows it's doing this, doing this, because if you just look at thousands, I can show you the code, I can show you a function right now, for example. Here, do you want me to, I can I'll share my screen. But what, what, one thing that I, I have a doubt, uh, Howard, is mm -hmm. uh, are the, the structures inside of each of your boxes of the same type, or are you, you having different algorithms for the different boxes that you have in your diagram? Yes. Yes. Um, it, it's um, um, the, the, Otherwise, one of the modules I'm planning to move, if, if they don't have different algorithms and different functions, I don't need another box. So the, the answer is yes, they do different things. Um, I yeah, but I, I mean, in, inside, what, what is inside the box? Uh, are they doing, for example, I could guess that you are using a multi-layer perceptron, but you're saying that you're not. Uh, but um, in the case, in the case you are doing that, I, I will think that okay, all the boxes are multi-layer perceptron with different inputs and outputs doing different things. But the inside of the box is doing exactly the same kind of 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 of, of algorithm. But uh, uh, that that's what I'm. I, I become a little bit confused on on what you're showing because I, I no no I, I, no no they're they're, they're different. It, that wouldn't work. Um, for example. Um, you know the, the model. For, well, you know you work on navigation, like on robots. Like the big, the, the big, you know, thing is people want end-to-end -end, um, neural networks, where you know just everything goes into neural network and comes out the other side. Um, th that wouldn't work at all for this. It's it's um, here. For example, let me just share the architecture. Which I was probably... oh, by the way, we are close to our oh, okay. schedule again. Okay, but it's so... it's it's, it's different. I'll just give an example. Despite the cancellation of maps. two talks, we are right on time. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Matching maps, for example, matching navigation maps is totally different than processing, say, the input vectors association module, which is totally different than the output vectors, which is totally different than the sequential model, the sequential module. And, and actually, you know, it's very biologically inspired. When I did this, I used to always wonder, you look at fish, for example, they're like the, the you know, central part of the brain is like this big, and then you look at their cerebellum, the cerebellum are this big. And the reason is, I think, according to what I'm showing is you have to bind time also, not just bind space. And probably that's what the animals are doing. They're binding space, binding time in the cerebellum. So in, in fact, each, each module you see there, it's doing something different. Um, I suppose if I was like, I, you know, there are people that are very skillful with neural networks and so they can get them through this and this. I suppose in theory, you could use a neural network to do everything or a transformer to do everything, but um, 
not in the way you're thinking, not as like a CNN to recognize photos, but uh, um, uh, it, it's the, 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 the function of each box is quite different. It's different. If it was the same, it would be in the same box. Okay, thank you, Howard. You, you're okay, right. Thank you. Unfortunately, we are over time now and have to move to the next talk. Thank you very much, Howard.